Jeremy. My friend. All right. <laughs> My friend. That's right. All right. Will you all please stand in, for, in honor of the reading of God's word? Our first scripture is from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, just like Miss Tina just said. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. And our second scripture is 1 John 4, 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In the summer between your junior and your senior year, uh, if you haven't done so already, you have to start making some tough decisions. And uh, so you have to decide, uh, do I go to college or do I go right in the workforce? Do I join the military? Um, if I am going to college, what college do I want to go to? Uh, what scholarships do I need to apply for? Uh, what stuff do I need to get in re need to get ready and get in order so that my, my future is kind of paved, at least that little part of it. So, so I, I had to make some decisions, and I honestly didn't know where to begin. Uh, I remember sitting in on a, on a senior, senior lunch that we did that year, and uh, all the seniors talking about where they're going, and I remember internally having just a little bit of a panic attack, thinking, I've got just under two years to go, and I don't really know what I'm going to do. Uh, I had some things in mind. I thought at one point I wanted to be a chef. I thought at one point I wanted to join the military. Uh, I also wanted to be a teacher. And there was a, there was a little calling inside of me also that was calling me to be a pastor, even in that, that summer right between my junior and senior year. And it was on a mission trip that uh, we were going to Appalachian Service Project. And back then we, we did combine mission trip with uh, our church and the Presbyterian Church right across the street. And on the way up, we always stayed the night at a hotel. And uh, that night, I, I was roomed with a, a Presbyterian youth and Pastor Rick DeLise. And it was after dinner, and Pastor Rick and I were having a conversation. And he's the first person I told that I felt called into ministry. And I felt specifically called into youth ministry at that time. Uh, I was pretty involved in the youth ministry here. I was part of the youth leadership. And uh, it just it felt right. But, um, but doubt started to set in. And uh, I, I looked around me at the world around me, and there wasn't a whole lot of youth pastors that I knew personally or that I knew of that were doing this full time and making a living for their family. So, so fear settled in and doubt, and I thought, maybe I should go on a different path. And so I was also signed up for a class called Advanced Drama. I don't know how that happened, um, I was only doing some plays. I never took a drama class, but uh, Dr. Dean Slusser asked me to join Advanced Drama. So maybe I did a good enough job in the plays that he thought that was a good fit for me. Um, someone else thought that it wasn't. So a week before school started, <laughs> so a week before school started, a week before my senior year started, I, I get a, a phone call from uh, Miss Rachel Baldwin and. Some of you guys might know who she is. She runs the work-based learning program, and they started a new thing that year called Teacher Apprenticeship. And somehow she had heard, because I guess I might have told one of my teachers uh, that I admired that I wanted to be a teacher, and she heard that I wanted to do that. So she called me and said, would you like to be part of this thing called Teacher Apprenticeship? And the, the catch was that it was the same class period as advanced drama, so I had to drop that to do that. So, so that's what I did. I, I took on advanced drama. I mean, I took on teacher apprenticeship, sorry. Uh, and, and it was a pretty cool class. You, uh, you had a textbook, with, which was basic how to teach, um, and all the theories and all, the, um, all the, the great minds of teaching telling you um, what it is to be an educator, like how people learn. And so that was part of the class. And then the other part of the class was uh, we had our little internships. And the first semester, we had uh, three-day internships every week, and it was at a different school every week. And so I got to go to like a kindergarten class, a pre-K class. Uh, I think I even went to a high school class. And uh, I went to one class in particular that kind of shook me. Um, all the other ones I kind of liked, but I went to middle school band, and specifically sixth grade band. 
And if you've ever been in a band room with sixth graders or even been to a sixth grade band concert, um, I think it's nice how they do the, the band concerts here in, in, Saint, in, in Camden County. They start with the sixth graders and work their way up so it gets progressively better as the night goes on. I've learned that because I've, I've had to go to those things. Um, I mean, I get to go to those things. <laughs> so here I am, a, a senior in high school in a sixth grade band class trying to at, get these kids to do what I asked them to do or, or to even just be a part of it in any way. And I was spooked. And from that moment on, I said, I'm not working with middle schoolers. There's no way. Just not going to do it. And so that, that combined with being interested in teaching initially scared me away from uh, being a youth pastor, also worrying about how would I ever make a living doing that. So I graduated that year, and um, I decided to go to Armstrong, which is now Armstrong, Georgia Southern. And uh, my, my major that I decided on was art education, uh, because I absolutely loved art. Um, every year since probably third grade, I took an art class all the way and took as many as I possibly could. And so I took art education, but I had a weird schedule. In the morning, I had my, my three academic classes, and they were back to back to back. But then in the middle of the day, I had this giant break. And being away from the nest and uh, just kind of being me at the time, a little uh, lazy, uh, instead of dedicating that time to getting my stuff in order and studying for those other classes, I decided to uh, to watch a whole lot of Family Guy and um, other TV and, and take a nap. And uh, so I got lazy and I got complacent. And then when my art class rolled around at night, which was about 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, I had two of them back to back, um, I was just not really checked in. And another thing with art in college that no one told me about is that they grade you on your ability. <laughs> uh, in high school and middle school and and thank God elementary school, if you just put a solid effort and made a pretty picture, you got an A. But that's not the case in college. You have to actually get better at art. And um, there was people that were much better at me, much better at it than me. And so I just, I felt like I came to a crossroads and a decision I had to make because art education just wasn't going to be it for me. So um, even though I, I was very much a slacker and that played a lot of role into it, I did take time to just pray about the direction I would be going. And, and I had a friend who uh, we, we were talking a lot, and, and she said, I really see you as a third grade teacher. And because she knew about, you know, my teacher apprenticeship experience, and she knew about my story there. And um, she'd seen me help out with, with kids at different stuff. And so she said, I really see you as a third grade teacher. And Armstrong just happened to be one of the best schools for elementary education. So it was almost an easy, de easy decision. So I switched over to that. And that's pretty much what I stayed on track with um, all through the rest of college. And, and I steadily improved my grades because, dear God, they needed improvement um, from that first year of just slacking so hard. Um, steadily improved my grades, got on track to graduate in December of 2007. Uh, right before that, I had finished up all my, my main classes, and then they make you student teach your last semester. And um, so, so I'm in my first student teaching, and uh, you know I'm, I'm going in the day-to-day. -day. I feel like I'm doing well, but again, my laziness kind of settled in, and I got complacent, and I just went to the day-to-day, -day, and stuff that needed graded piled up and lessons that needed written did not get written. And then we come to the point where it's almost my turn to take over the class because when you student teach, you take over the class for at least a week and it's all yours. And I was not ready and there was no way that I was gonna catch up. So I dropped out of my first student teaching. And from doing that, I fell into like a, a very hard hole of depression. And I was scared that I was never gonna graduate. And I was scared at worst that I would be homeless someday. And I was scared at best that I would just be forever struggling to try to make a living in this world. So, so I prayed, even in, in that depressive hole, I prayed. And with the support of my family, I came out of that hole and with prayer 
and with God giving people in my life. And it led me to a grace filled meeting with my advisor and the College of Ed department head. And we made a plan together. It was basically, a, it was actually mainly their plan. They said, you're going to do this. And um, so they said, I needed to take a few more classes. I needed to get at least a B in those classes. And if I did that, then I would get to student teach again in the following fall. So I prayed Thanksgiving over that and, and gave thanks for my blessings. And I took those classes and I did well and I got to student teach again. So, so, so we're coming to the end of that student teaching and something came along that I don't think anyone in this country ever expected. And uh, we're in 2008, by the way. And uh, we're coming to the end of that and I'm worried that I won't find a teaching job because what I thought was a recession proof career actually wasn't recession proof. And everyone that I graduated with, th that I would have graduated with in 2007 already had a job because they were, they were um, freely av available the year before. So I searched and I prayed every day for a teaching job. I got turned down for teaching job after teaching job. And I, I interviewed and some of them went well, some of them didn't. And I'm still searching for a teaching job. So one night, I think um, Amber and I prayed together. And, uh, and we prayed specifically for a job for when I graduated. And so right before Thanksgiving of 2008, the prayer was answered with a text message from my friend Kelly. And my friend Kelly was about to go on maternity leave, but she was at a, a private school uh, on Tybee Island. And her principal basically told her, you can handpick who you want to take over for you for your maternity leave. So she picked me. And I came out and met the class and met the principal and got to know the school and they approved. Um, I'm sure there were still some conditions. She couldn't just pick any Joe off the street. But um, so I went out and got approved and I did that for a semester and I prayed Thanksgiving over that new blessing. So I did that for a semester and I applied to be their full-time teacher, but I got turned down for that too. And um, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because a year later that school closed. So, so then I'm, I'm working just your basic tourist jobs in Savannah to make ends meet. I'm working for a bike taxi. I'm uh, working on a riverboat. And then I start praying specifically for a teaching job, no matter where it was. And at this point, I'd also been subbing for about a year in, Can in uh, Chatham County Schools. And so I'm subbing, and that's going well. And, you know, I've, I've got a, a decent, steady steady income and I feel at home there like I feel at home in Savannah and I don't want to leave but I pray specifically for a teaching job no matter where it was um, I felt that maybe I was praying too much for for some selfish reasons and I wanted to stay where I was and so then a prayer is answered uh, my stepmom tells me about a job lead down here in St. Mary's that her friend had actually turned down and it was for a pre-k job at a uh, crayons academy and I was so excited because I felt like this was definitely the prayer that was answered, that I'm getting an interview for an actual teaching job once again, and it's almost a shoe in So I'm so excited that I show up to the interview 30 minutes early. And when I get there early, the principal actually tells me to leave, like go find some McDonald's and come back. And um, so I did, and I, and I came back at my exact time, and, and, uh, I end up getting the job. And later on at a training that we had, the principal actually told me, she said, I, I hired you because I felt the Holy Spirit in that interview. And that was, that was amazing and affirming. So I prayed Thanksgiving over this new job. So I teach pre-K for a year. And since I moved back home, I, I start getting back involved in my home church, which is this, this church, St. Mary's United Methodist. And uh, the first little bit of stuff I do is uh, I get to help out with um, with a confirmation that year. And Amber and I did that together. So that's actually my first experience in youth ministry. And then throughout the next few years, I keep getting asked to do more and more things. You, some of y'all know what it's like to be voluntold in a church. And uh, that was me. And one of the things that, that I got voluntold to do um, was Darla Wynn asked me for six Sundays in a row to teach three and four-year-old Sunday school. 
And for five of those Sundays, I told her no. <laughs> but on the sixth one, I, I, I actually had kept praying about it. Um, I didn't want to teach Sunday school, especially little kids, because I had worked with little kids throughout the week. And I felt like the weekend was my time to be away from them. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And so, so I prayed over it. And on that sixth week, she asked me again. I said, yes, I'll do it. So, so I teach three- and four-year-old Sunday school for about a year and a half, two years almost. And that really starts building the calling in my life back again. That combined with the other stuff that I'm involved in at church. And along that way, I get asked to help out with youth by our former youth pastor, Luke. And so over those next two years, here I am right back where I said a long time ago, I'm never working with middle schoolers. And I was terrified at first. But, you know, I, I worked with them and helped out where I was needed. And that call just started to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. And, and then that led me eventually over those, those next two years that, uh, that a position came open. And I knew about it right away because me and Luke were tight. So I, I got my resume ready. And at this moment, I'm, I'm working for a, for a behavior therapy clinic. And I've been working there almost four years. I didn't stay in the pre-K job. And I've been working on a master's in that field for the last two and a half years. And, you know, we, Amber and I, we, we have... We spent four, four years working on me growing in this position and growing in this field. I'm three weeks away from a master's degree, and I've spent thousands of dollars on a master's degree itself also. And I can still remember what Amber said, and she's going to get mad at me when I say this, but I can still remember what she said when, when I told her I wanted to apply. She said, I didn't sign up for that. She said, I didn't marry a pastor. And it was fair, because she didn't, and we didn't. We both didn't sign up for that. But we, we had a plan. Um, it was a good plan. It was a stable plan. We had a, I had a plan that I had worked hard towards. I was going to be a behavior therapist and maybe work my way up the company. But what I love to tell everybody that I tell the story to is that God has a way of laughing at our plans. And I'm so thankful that he thinks I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so God's call on me became too strong and too loud to ignore anymore. And so now we prayed. Amber and I both prayed over this. And Amber and I together came and prayed, and she gave her blessing to me. She said, if you apply for it and you get hired, then it's God's plan. And it was one of the scariest things that I've ever done. It's still sometimes one of the scariest things that I'm doing. Because um, I didn't know what, what I was actually signing up for. I didn't know how to do the job, but over four years later, I'm still prayerfully going where God is calling me. I'm still asking his guidance daily for the direction in my part of this greater ministry of the church and his kingdom, and I'm always striving to fully trust him, not my own understanding, and believe more and more every day that fear really is a liar and that Jesus' love will keep perfecting me and keep driving out that fear because I definitely don't have it perfected yet. I don't think it'll ha I don't think that level of perfection is, is for us to have happen here on this earth. But as John Wesley said, I'm striving towards perfection. I'm trusting more and more every day. So what is God calling you to today? What fear is holding you back from the next big thing that God has for you? Maybe God is calling you to serve somewhere in this church that you know is outside your comfort zone. Maybe someone's been asking you over and over and over again, and you've been saying no over and over and over again. Maybe God is calling you to start something big that you're afraid you might fail at. Whatever it is, or even if you don't know yet, I invite you to purposely pray for the perfect love-filled vision and plan that God has in store for you. Because thank God that so much prayer led me right here. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time that we share together, and just thank you for, for your guiding and your perfect love and your understanding that just washes away all our own misunderstanding. And God, I pray that for every beating heart in this room that they realize the plan that you have for them and that they prayerfully seek it each and every day. In your son's name we pray.
ਮੈਮ